Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Amen. Well, I'm going to call uh, my message Beyond the Bandage. Who remembers Beyond the Bandage? One person. Thank you, Jesus. Two people. Three people. Okay, Beyond the Bandage, when, uh, when I started preaching, um, when I was forced to preach, when we started the church, um, the Lord sometimes forces you to preach, right? And then he gives you amazing titles. Like, I remember, like, I, I don't, I'm not really a title person. I have to think, like, a, a whole day to, you know, to title my message. But I remember that God gave me, I don't know how long ago. Anyone remembers? Probably five years ago, right? Uh, he gave me a message that I would do every third Wednesday of the month. And it was called Beyond the Bandage. And let me tell you that five years ago, I thought like, oh, I am so beyond the bandage. I can teach the people. And then I thought to myself, I was talking to Pastor Jessica yesterday. We were just uh, reminiscing. You know, we were thinking about the nine years that we're about to celebrate. We were thinking and talking about that we just celebrated resurrection life, right? And then I thought, wow, but in the last two years, I have been through hell and back. Literally. And, and then I was, she reminded me, she's like, remember when you used to preach Beyond the Bandage? And we were laughing, because you have to laugh at lie at some point, right? And she's like, you were prophesying to your life. And I was like, I didn't know that I was going to be the first student. <laughs> you know, I was going to be the first student to move forward, removing the bandages that life has given some of us, you know, some of the hurts and pains that we go through. But I believe that tonight you're going to be encouraged. I don't know where you're in life. I don't know what your situation is, but God knows. And I'm going to tell you that he is in control. I know that maybe some of us, some of you tonight feel like, you know what, what is, I don't see no control here. As a matter of fact, the more I pray, the more I stand, the more chaotic my life or my family life or whatever you're believing for, you're thinking that it's getting more chaotic. But I'm going to tell you that behind the scenes, he's still in control. Amen. He's still moving pieces around. I don't know how to play chess, but I thought he, it's like, that's like life. That was, that's what Jesus does. He, he gives us all the pieces. I don't know what movement I need to, he already has placed every, has not only placed, but he already taking care of every detail that you and I are going to need throughout our lives because his salvation is good. And it has taken me a while to say that his salvation is good all the time. I want you to go to that first verse, and that's in Romans 10, 13. And one of the things that I love about salvation is not only when you gave your life to Jesus. How, how many here have been saved for more than 10 years? Okay. Do you know that your salvation doesn't have an expiration date? If you've been uh, saved for 20 years, 30 years, maybe you grew up in a, in a Christian home and you've been 40 years walking with Jesus. And I'm going to tell you that the same salvation that you receive, the same gifting is forever present. And his salvation is for now. Now we are being saved. For whatever you need, he is here for you. Romans 10, 13 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? I used to think, okay, yeah, I did call on the name of the Lord 22 years ago, and that's why I look 25. <laughs> Life has been good to me. Who believes I'm 25? You get a t-shirt when I make one. <laughs> but in my 22 years, many times, and I think I said it before, I thought, you know what? He saved me, and he did deliver me from so many things that I needed deliverance then. But throughout life, he will continue. The Bible says, work out your own salvation every Sunday. Have you read that verse? <laughs> work out your own salvation every Easter. <laughs> work out your own salvation every Elevate night. Work out your own salvation in prophetic nights, in prophetic conference once a year. Work out your own salvation during Christmas so I can gift you some stuff. No, it says, work out your own salvation daily. Daily. 
So I believe that today you're, there's going to be a bubble of hope inside of you. There's going to be a river of hope flowing out of your pain, maybe out of your disappointment, because you, you need to know that his salvation is for now. And I call it beyond the bandages because I was thinking about, about Sunday, this past Sunday, we were talking about resurrection life. And who doesn't want resurrection life? Do you want resurrection life? I want resurrection life. But I'm going to tell you that it was a, a process to get to be, to have the resurrected life. To have resurrection life, there is a process. Jesus was in ministry about three and something years. There was a process that he prepared. It was three years. He was Jesus. Why didn't he do it in one day? If he was Jesus, why didn't he just snap his fingers and then the disciples were like super understanding? No, they were dumb. I mean, they were. Like sometimes we do dumb things. In my 22 years, I am so thankful. And I was sharing this with someone. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that he doesn't listen to all of my prayers. You know why? Because there have been, in my time, there have been times that I have told the Lord, you know what? If you're not going to heal me, if you're not going to restore me, then take me. How many have said that? Yes. Right? I'm just, I, I have said that. Yes. And repeated times as a prayer. Heavenly Father, just take me. <laughs> and I was like thinking today, I was, I was driving. I was like, thank you, Jesus, that you don't answer every crazy prayer. Because you know what? Then I wouldn't be here. Then I wouldn't be running the race that God has called me. And I'm just being, I'm just throwing it there because we're going to cast it all, right? But I just want you to know that you're not the only one. We should start a, mo a movement just like the world is doing it, but in the kingdom, me too. <laughs> that me too movement. Jesus said, me too. No, but you don't understand Jesus. I've been betrayed. Oh, me too. You don't understand, Jesus. People have forsaken me. They left me hanging. My own friends, the ones that I thought they were going to be there with me, they left me. Me too. No, but you don't understand, Jesus. They actually said and talk about me. They denied. They, they didn't even say, I don't even know Virginia. I don't know who, who is that crazy woman. Me too. Everything that you and I have gone through anything or will go through anything, Jesus would always tell you, me too. I was trying to like write everything, you know, because sometimes it's good to write. I'm learning how to feel my emotions. They're wonderful, aren't they? You know, there's only one switch of emotions. There's only one. We cannot switch off the bad ones because when we switch off the bad one, you know, I don't want to feel fear. I don't want to feel anger. I don't want to feel disappointment. And we, and we choose to turn it off. Then you're not going to feel joy. You're not going to feel peace. You're not going to feel hope. So God said, you know, turn it on. Let the party start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dance. It's time to dance. It's time to believe. It's time to move the bandages. So I was thinking about the disciples. And let me give you my next verse before I go into a story of, of Jesus. Oh, well, let's go to Peter 2.24. Because I, I'm going to tell you that Jesus died. And like I said, we want resurrection life. I want resurrection life. But I don't want to. I don't like the process. I don't like the process that it takes for me to walk in redemption. I don't like the process that to me to walk in wholeness. I don't like it. I just want Jesus to snap his fingers on the Holy Ghost to come over me. And voila, I'm a woman of faith. I'm a woman that doesn't run away. I'm a woman who believes. I'm a woman who prophesies every freaking day. <laughs> freaking is not bad. You know that, right? I heard your music in your car. You, it's worse than freaking. You're real freaky, you know? <laughs> but I wish, was it, wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome that we just, you know, go to God and we just prophesy and voila? You become French because I'm saying voila? <laughs> I know different um, uh, uh, languages if you want to talk to me after. So many times we get, we, we, we get upset at God because of everything that has taken place in my life or in your life. And, 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 and so we write down everything. Write down your emotions, Virginia. 
Thank God he is the only one who gets to read them, right? And then as I read that, I'm like, but Jesus went to the cross. That was the purpose that Jesus went to the cross so he can carry it for you. So I don't have to carry it. That doesn't mean I'm not going to experience those things. It means that he is the one who carries my sickness. He is the one who carries your sickness. It doesn't mean you're not going to get sick. We are not exempted just because we are followers of Jesus Christ. You know what? You have been exempted. We have a, we have a batch. And he says, exempted from pain. Exempted from conflict. You shall not have conflict because Jesus died for you on the cross. No, you will encounter all of that. But you need to know that God is there and he did it once and for all. So 1 Peter 2, 24 says that he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin. So that means that we always have a way out. Because he says we are immune. You're like, I was reading that, but if we're immune, then how are we having all this crappy life, right? Why are we encountering all of these things? Why are we so easily falling for the enemy? No, but he has given us the power that I can withstand, that you can withstand. He has given us immunization. We have been vaccinated, people. And it's called the blood of Jesus. The blood runs in our own blood. But see, that, it can't be just head knowledge because you need it in your darkest moments. You need it when you're fighting your greatest battle of your life. Maybe you are in the greatest battle of this season in your life because there will be other seasons. But I'm going to tell you the same DNA that flows through Jesus flows through you and I. Because he personally and willingly went for you and I. And he says that we, we are immune from the penalty and power of sin. And live for what? For righteousness. But I don't feel right. I know we don't feel right. It's, we are righteous through the eyes of God because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we can come when we mess up. For Jesus, we can come when we're, when we're confused. Because of Jesus, we're able to enter into the throne room of God. And we have access we have access in our darkest moments, in our hardest moments. We have access to the Father if you are willing to believe it. And I'm not speaking just because believe it. No, believe me when I tell you that there's moments in my life when I have not wanted to go to the throne room of God. No, I just want you to take this away from me. Like Paul, like, you know what? We have to learn from Paul. I always, when I read, he pleaded three times. Come on, Paul, you could have pleaded a thousand times. He got it three times. Isn't it something three? It's always three. Three years was Jesus in ministry. Three years was he in hell, getting every single key, bringing life to all of us, bringing resurrection life. Three. We should make a song about three. Write that down. It's free for you, Lexi. It says, for by my wounds you believe and have been healed past tense right he says by my wounds we have been healed do you know I never forget I never forget when I I don't know if I shared this story but if if I have just indulge me just like pretend like you did and like oh mm, sounds a good story but I remember when we started the church we you know nine years ago about nine years ago and I was afraid because because, you know, sometimes we don't want fear, but fear will always come. But sometimes you just have to do things afraid, right? And as you're doing it, then God gives you the courage because if, the, if he says, take courage, that means, like, why would, I have need, why would I need courage if I don't have fear, right? So we freak out with fear. And so I, I was, but I was in the moment, I told the Lord, okay, whatever you ask me, Lord, I'm going to do it. And I was, at that time, I was exercising. One of those times in my life only. <laughs> you know, only a few in my 40 something years. 
So I was, I was feeling great. You know, when you feel great, you feel right with God, and you get on a treadmill, right? And you look at the panoramic view, because I'm like, people invite me to go walking, but they walk like we're going for a walk around the park. I'm like, if we're going to go to work out, like, let's, come on, let's, let's run. Look, I, mean, I don't run, but look, come on, let's do it, like, pace it. Let's not talk. Like, when we, someone wants, and they took even sandwiches, I'm like, I didn't come to eat sandwiches. I need to get in shape. I need to avoid sandwiches. True story. So anyway, so I decided to do it, and I was on a treadmill, and I had a view. I was at this conference, and I was, you know, when you're pumped up, and, and you have, like, wow, oh, you're at the peak of your faith, and everything is, like, well, right? Like, the kids are behaving. The husband is behaving, right? I'm behaving. You know, everyone is behaving. The peace of God, I'm keeping it. And so I was like that, and then so I was in my treadmill, and I was going really fast, pretending that I know how to do it, right? Super, super, super exhausted, and then I remember when God says, Virginia, can I, can I trust you with my wounds? It's like, Psh, yes, you can. Why wouldn't you? And he showed me his body, and he asked me, do you love me? I was like, I feel like Peter. Am I Peter here? Have I denied you? But you know, you get like, you, you go on the protection mode. You go on like defense mode. Like, are we having this conversation, God? Because you know I have served you, right? I just left my job and I don't have a paycheck. Are you still questioning me? Do I love you? Hello? Right? So he says, do you love me? Yes. And I feel like Peter. Like, now I feel like Peter. You know, like, we should be pals. We always put our foot in our mouth, right? And so I, I was like, yes, Lord. And he says, I want you, I'm going to trust you with the wounds on my body. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You're so sweet. Thank you. And I felt so, like, honored. But I didn't know that he wanted me to trust you as a body. He wants to trust you with the wounds of, of this world, with the wounds of the people that don't have Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something that I have figured out. People are afraid of wounds, open wounds. You know that? Oh, I... Many of you are like, I cannot even see blood. I've been trying to watch The Passion of Christ for the second time. Because it's too much for me to watch it. I don't want to see Jesus all bloody. I like him when that he's in heaven sitting at the, at the right hand of the Father. I like that idea. I don't like him that he went through, the, through his suffering. I want to partake of his resurrection, but yet I don't want to suffer in this life. Do you know who you are and you and I are going to partake of the cup of suffering? It's part of life. It's just part of it. But we're not alone. And when he died, I thought to myself, like, okay, in those three days, I'm like, okay, Friday, can you imagine? Just, just think, think right now. Maybe something in your life maybe it's your family your children your health your finances i don't know your career the job that you always wish you had maybe just got fired like everything that could be wrong went wrong and you're like and then you feel lost just like the day jesus died that friday and people were lost his disciples were like what the heck he's supposed to be alive he's supposed to be the king he's supposed to save us and now he's dead what is dead in your life and I thought, oh my gosh, the pain. Because I know the pain of grief. I know when you lose, whether you lost a family member or someone lost a, a, maybe a marriage or lost a friend, you grieve. But this was the king. This was the savior. And then I thought, what about Saturday? We don't think of Saturday. Can you imagine how they felt? Can you imagine how the world, how Jerusalem and everyone that knew about Jesus, it was dead silence. They went into hiding. They didn't know what to do. They were confused. Their dream, their savior had died. And I don't know what had died in your life, and it seems like it's dead, but I'm going to tell you that it's not dead. It's in the process of reviving it's in the process of becoming what jesus meant to be or what jesus meant for you to be or whatever to be wholeness and then sunday right sunday came and he resurrected only a few saw him 
I get awesome for the ones that saw him, right? Many times in Aloha with Alexis and the, the, everybody was just preaching my message, prophesying over my message when he said like, where are you, Jesus? Like many times I'm like, where are you? You're missing your MIA in the hardest time of my life? I want answers. And then I think about all of them and thinking like, my gosh, it's Saturday. You're, whatever we thought that we were going to do for him is dead. Whatever we thought that we were going to, we're going to heal the sick and we were going to set the captives free. We were going to do everything that Jesus taught us. You know what? That dream is dead. Then Sunday came and then he went to see only a few disciples. You know, because he not only had the 12, he had more disciples. He had a crowd. He had, he had see, 70. He had a lot of people following him. We just talk about the main, you know, the main entourage, right? The main crew, the hanging bodies, the ones that stood by him, the ones that were under his teaching constantly, the ones that were always going and doing what he was telling them to do, the ones that saw all the miracles, the ones that went when he said when he took the three of his best friends, he took them when he was at the garden and he didn't know what to do. He, he felt every pain. I, and I believe that he was sweating like tears of blood because he felt your pain that you're having right now. He felt the sorrow. He felt your disappointment. He felt whatever you're feeling today, he felt it that day. And when he went to the cross, he had you in mind. Because God wants us to move. But when he resurrected, I'm going to tell you what he did. He removed his bandages. Wouldn't it be awesome that they knew how they wrapped him? You know, they went and they wrapped him and they, and I don't know the name of the, the the person who brought him down, I, I, I'm not remembering right now, but they wrapped him. Like in those times, they used to wrap you like a mummy. So they put him in the tomb. But when he came out, he should have came out like, you know what? Just go show them. Still show them with your bloody self. Go show them with your open wounds, like everything. No, he didn't come like that. But you know what he showed? He went and he entered and he went and he showed his wounds, because Jesus is not afraid to show his own wounds. And Jesus doesn't want you to be afraid to show your own scars, your own wounds. Let me give you, let me give you a scripture. John 20, 19, 21 says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. That means they were, they were hiding because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing here among them, and he says, Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. I'm like, why did he have to show his wounds? You know that it's easy to talk about, like, um, we all have scars. Because it's easy to talk about, like, all scars. And, and we only show the ones that we're not embarrassed about, right? Like, I have acrylic nails, so the last time I broke, so I put a Band-Aid over it. But I didn't change the Band-Aid. Like, it was the same Band-Aid we look, like, for, like, two days. So it was dirty. And um, it was embarrassing. And, uh, but I didn't care. Because, you know, it's only my nail. It's broken. It's not like I have an open wound. So I can show you, look, I broke my nail. Right? It's easy to show. Look, um, you see this here? I, I got this scar when I was five and I was, you know, playing. And, and we show the ones that we feel comfortable with. When I was little, I was running, and we talk about those scars. And those are physical scars. And some, some of our scars, whether they're physical, they're still hidden because they're in places that are very like, oh, no, that I can't show. I cannot talk about those. But the same goes with their inner world, with their inner sense, with their, with their soul. There's things that we don't want to show. I have to say that it takes bravery to show it. There's countless of inner wounds. The griefs never quite heals. Maybe you're grieving tonight and you feel that that hasn't left you. You're still grieving the loss of a marriage. Maybe you're still grieving the loss of a child. 
I don't know what you're grieving. They're wrongs that can never be righted. We can't change our past. There's memories that cannot be erased, hurtful words or betrayal that still seem to have a direct line to our tear ducts. There's always a knot on the stomach when you think of something. But I'm going to tell you that we don't have to. It's okay. We don't have to be afraid of feeling that. Because we have the answer. And his name is Jesus. He says, peace be with you. The peace that he can only give. You know the peace of the world? And many times we're trying to keep peace. Because the peace of the world says that everything should be put together. If you have peace, then you shouldn't have any problems. Is, is there peace in your house? You shouldn't have any conflict in the house. No, no, no. That's not the peace that God talks about. He talks about a different peace. And I want to read you a, a verse. If we go to our second verse. John 14, 27 says, I am leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. Do you know that peace is a gift? That's what the Bible says. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. John 16, 33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You know, it's easy. It's so easy to show, to show, to show scars that they already like it happened 20 years ago. It's easy to share something that happens 20 years ago, but it's not easy to show when you're going through your process. I'm showing you my process. It's not easy to show open wounds. And I think we are afraid of it. And the world is in need of a me too. It's not easy to say, I've been depressed. It's not easy to say, I've been in anxiety. It's not easy to say, I've been disappointed. It's not easy to say, I've been betrayed. It's not easy to say all those things. But I believe that people need to hear it. I believe that people need to see, see that we're relatable. But the only difference that we have is that we have a Jesus. The only difference that we have is that we have a God who is not dead. We have so many differences that I know that whether I feel home or no, I need to know that my God will never leave me. He never promised me an easy life. He never promised you an easy life. Where you show me in the Bible, show me one, one character, show me one person in the Bible who led a life that was just wonderful. Show me someone who wasn't betrayed. Show me someone that no one that, that wasn't that wasn't being uh, persecuted. Show me someone that didn't go wasn't in pain. Show me one in the Bible, and yet we want to live this fantasy life. And no, there's not a fantasy life. And faith is facing those things that we don't know. We do not want to face. Faith is facing the darkness. Faith is facing the ugliest battles of your life. And you know, sometimes I'm going to tell you, we carry our own kid without knowing, right? Beyond the bandage, Jesus moved, he removed his bandages. Jesus, even when he resurrected Lazarus from the dead, he says, hey, remove them, take off the bandages. He says that he heals us and he, he does, he, he binds our, our wounds. 
But you know what? If you go to the hospital, every day you need to change the gauze. Every day it needs to be changed. Sometimes four times a day, constantly to get healing. But we know we, we, we do this. There's times in my life where I've thought, you know what? No, 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 no. This is getting like, this is getting like, good thing I carry my own bandages. You know, because if God is not showing up right now, hey, I can do it. Uh, and I have names for it. I'm going to go back to my comfort zone. You know, because this is too hard. I, I can't deal with the church. I can deal with the people. And they're always sending me emails. So don't send me an email tonight. <laughs> and then you're believing. You're trying to believe. But you're so broken. And you're like, my gosh. And people don't even give you the time to heal. They want you to voila. Well, they're faking if they're telling you, Jesus, and, oh, you know what? Start, start by telling the truth. No, but then you know what? No, because it's not okay to say that I'm going to my healing process. So you know what? I'm going to go into hiding. I know that the bandage very well. And praise God, that is adhesive. I don't have to do nothing. And then the enemy comes and he lies to you and he says, you know what? You're done. You wanna, this is never going to change. If Jesus hasn't done it in 22 years, why would he do it now? Hey, you're a pastor. You're a leader. You're an elder. Do you have rank in the kingdom? Do you know what? No, 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 no. And then the enemy continues to, you know what? I'm just going to run away. I don't want to hear one more problem. I don't even want my phone to ring. God even had to deliver me from the ringing tone on my phone. I would hear the ringing tone and my heart would drop. I don't want to hear one more problem. Right? There's times in your life that you, I, I can't take the kids. No more screaming. I, I don't want to hear more that I can't pay the bill. I don't want to hear that my son did this, my daughter did this, and, or this happened here. I don't want to hear that I'm losing my mind. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with life anymore. So we continue to bandage ourselves. We go into, what I say here? Into numbing. I need to numb it. Hey, I'm on a Netflix bench. <laughs> you don't word bench. Who binges on the word? Are you like, no, you know what? And if that fails, I'm going to go into denial. You know, walk around like that. And then this gets tighter. And we don't clean it every day. We don't, we, we don't do that. And just in case, you know, because you never know. Hey, live <laughs> church ministry is, mm, you know what? No, this is not working. I'm going to do my other hand. I'm going to go into shutdown mode. Good thing I know how to roll this, you know. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to revert back. Have you reverted back? You know what revert back means? You're like, no, I was doing so good. Jesus was working in my life. I thought that I had my family together. I thought that my kids, I can see the future of my kids, but at this point, I can't even see it. Because these knuckleheads are doing whatever they want. And on top of that, I'm being criticized because I'm not a good mom. So you know what? I'm just going to revert. Jesus, you take the wheel. You take care of my kids. No, you need to take care of your own kids. If that doesn't work out, you know, I'm just going to be nasty. I didn't want to write nasty, right? I'm just going to lash out. I saw people. They're getting on my nerves. Where's that compassion? I don't care about compassion. You have compassion on your own self. If that doesn't work, you know, I'm just going to coward. But people are saying this, I don't care. Do you know how, how, how dangerous it is when you're like in I don't care mode? I don't care. Because we misunderstood what peace really is. And we walk around like that. And I was going to bring more bandages and wrap my legs around so you get the point. Actually, I feel like I'm going to pass on our skinny. This is really tight. And just in case, I have my Sharpie <laughs> and another one, just if I need it. And I have my scissors. 
to cut people. No, just kidding. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Jesus, come back. But we live like that. I have lived like this. I was just living like this. And you know what it takes? You want to do it alone. This is what we do when we do it alone. You could be in church and you could still be doing it alone. And you know, you pray to God and you say, God, I want to trust you. Then at some point you need to trust people. No, Lord, I just trust you. I just trust Jesus. I have three friends. How many friends do you have? What's your security, people? Who speaks into your life? Yes, Lord, I have three people. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. How about people with flesh and blood? Nope. No, no, no. You know how they are, Christians, you know? We know how they are, right? No, you know, I'm not talking about Christians. I'm talking about Jesus, followers of Jesus. The ones that we're not afraid to show our wounds. Okay, let me show you. This is what happened to me. This is what I'm going through right now. Do you know how hard that is? Because people have such a stigmatism about it. We have so much compassion on people that have cancer. We wouldn't say, you know what? Do not take the medication that the doctor is giving you. No, we pray for the wisdom of the doctor to give us the medication. You have diabetes? Oh my God, please, by all means, take the insulin. Have you noticed that? But what happens when you hit depression? No, then you don't have enough faith. What happens when you get anxiety? Oh, sister, if you have anxiety, dude, I don't know what kind of sin you're living in. What have you done? People that have cancer, they have done nothing. We just live in a broken world. People that have depression, they have done nothing. We just live in a broken world. But God wants to remove the bandages. And he doesn't want you to be afraid. So in my course of life, I have learned, and it's the hard way, but I, there's so many people here sitting that have helped me. You know how hard that, that's the bravest thing. If you want to be like Jesus, then go and show your open wounds. Look, here it is. And you know that they said that the disciples rejoice. I thought, why? If it's Jesus, why didn't he patch his, his wounds? He could have, right? He could have said, you know what? I don't like this hole because it reminds me of the pain. I don't like this hole. I don't like this hole. I don't like this hole. And I don't like the, the, the holes in my feet. They're, they're, they're open wounds. See, he didn't wait. He, he showed them that first thing. Hey, look, here you go. He could have waited, right? Let, let the skin grow, whatever. He is Jesus. He is the son of God. He could have said, Father, can you please fill these holes? But he didn't because he wants us to, to see that he has been in every place that you are in this time right now. And we need people to help us to, to remove our bandages. And I have a few people here that they have helped me to remove bandages. They have seen my ugly. Do you know how hard that is? People that won't judge you. People that will say, yeah, Virginia, but Jesus has not left you. Can you do that to others? Why do we have to have it all together? We're just people with flesh and blood. We just have a different calling. So I just want to encourage you. And I'm going to tell you what peace is not. Jesus said, peace be with you. Why did he say it twice? And you know, he was so amazing because he showed it on the third day to his 12 disciples. But Thomas, remember Thomas, little Tommy? Tommy says, you know what? I didn't see Jesus, so I don't know. He was still grieving. He couldn't take their word for it. No, but Jesus was here. Actually, we were together. He didn't even open the door. He went just through the door, came, and he showed us his wounds. Like, no, until I see it, I believe it. Continue to read John. And you know what? He was so good that a week after he showed, like, hey, Thomas, dude, here. 
Tommy, my boy. He didn't go like, you know, Thomas, you, we call him Thomas the doubter because we love to call people. We would love to label people. Jesus didn't say, and Thomas the doubter said this. It's not in the Bible. You and I have created because, oh my gosh, if you doubt Jesus Christ, you are serving the devil. <laughs> He's not afraid of our doubts. We are afraid of doubts. Jesus didn't go in like, Thomas, can you go to the office with me? We need to talk about the conversation that you have with the other 11, the other 10. You should have been a good example. Why were you saying that? Why didn't you take their word for it? Look, now I have to come and show you what kind of disciple are you? And you think you're going to change the world? Am I going to trust you? I'm going to leave you as an ambassador and look at you doubting me? See, we, we do that. We have called them the doubter. He didn't. He just said, hey, Thomas, buddy, come. Even he said, touch it. And you know what? I believe he doesn't say that he touched it, but he just fell at his feet because Jesus doesn't come to condemn you. You know that? He doesn't condemn us. So if you're feeling guilty, you know what? Forget that. If you have Jesus, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to feel guilt. You just have to trust them. And this is what I wrote. Jesus will tell you tonight, because this is a word that he told me. Tell them this. Jesus will tell you tonight, peace. And this is a personal word. You know what your peace. You know what you need tonight. So grab it. I'm being like very vulnerable. I'm telling you. Without this, I wouldn't be here. He says, Jesus will tell you tonight, peace be with you. When you feel that you're at your lowest, God is able to reach you. Are you at your lowest? Then let me tell you, God is able to reach you. Do you feel unlovable at this time? Well, let me tell you, that is when he is able to bring us hope. Perhaps the truth is that our very lowest, our very lowest moments, maybe at our most broken places, we understand and I understand a need for him much more deeply than before. So don't be afraid. Do it afraid. Jesus said again, peace be with you. Jesus is telling you, peace be with you. And he says, be courageous. Take heart. Take heart. But I think you need to understand, and I'm going to read it. One thing you need to understand is that peace, the peace that he offers, the gift that he offered means you must get it today, tonight. It's available. That gift is available for you tonight. Peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is not the absence of sorrow, sadness, and depression. Peace is not the absence of those things. Peace is the presence of Christ. Peace is the love of our Father. Peace is the presence of Jesus in the love of our Father in the middle, in the midst of our trouble. That's peace. In the middle of your sickness right now. I don't know if you've been diagnosed with any sickness. Like they say, you know what? There is no cure. But peace is, is having him, the presence of God and the love of my father in the midst of this sickness. And believing that he is able to do something with this sickness. Peace is to be in the middle of your greatest storm. And know that he is present with you. Peace is his powerful presence in the middle of your greatest battle. Maybe you are in your worst place of your life in this moment in time. And be at peace, knowing that he is in control. How is he in control? He's still in control. He's still moving pieces around. He is in control. We are in charge, but he's in control. You're still in charge of your life. You're still in charge of your choices, but he's still in control. He's still in control of your calling. He's still in control of your family. He's still in control of your children. He's still in control of your health. And you have to see it like that. Be a bulldog. 
And all you have to do is show up. Here I am. My homecoming. I'm like Beyonce, right? But in a kingdom way. When life leaves you lemons, you throw them at people. No, just kidding. You make lemonade with sweet honey. All you have to do is show up. In my last verse, and I'm closing with this, and I know I'm late. Matthew 17, 20 says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and I will move, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. You know what I have spent most of my 22 years trying to move that mountain? He never said, Move the mountain. Does he say that? He doesn't say this. And you need to move this mountain from here to there. It doesn't say that. It says, and you will speak to the mountain and it will move. You will speak to the mountain and it will move. It, say, it doesn't say, and you will speak to the mountain and you shall move it. No, he will move it for us. What do you need to be moved out of your life? Speak to it then. Speak to it. You know with Jesus, when you have depression, you can still get up? And sometimes you need to take medication. <gasps> oh my God, no. <laughs> unbelief, unbelief. I'm going to show you a finger. But it's not that middle finger. No. Jesus is not done yet. And you can be, you cannot be ashamed of your open wounds if you're going through something right now. Or maybe you already have a wound that's already healed. Then show it to people. Tell them this is what Jesus delivered me. He delivered me from drug, alcohol, whatever it is. He delivered me from depression. He delivered me. He delivered my family. Look, he did it for me. He could do it for you. Do you imagine how many people will come to know him? If we would just be like him? If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.